in some religious traditions, the idea is that if you disobey God, if you defy God, God will send you to hell. In the Vedic tradition, God doesn't send anyone to hell. God, it is their own karma which sends people to hell. But God goes with people to hell. Because even when somebody goes to hell, Krishna is there as the Paramatma with them. So even a soul who has gone to hell, Krishna doesn't reject or abandon them. So Krishna is there with every single person. So often this is many religious traditions now, especially Christianity, they try to soften the teaching. But say actually hell is all metaphorical and it's the idea of God being so cruel as sending people to hell just because of not surrendering to Jesus in one lifetime. That seems very barbaric. So the Vedic tradition is that, that God sends people to hell, that is not true at all. It is not that, see the Bhagavad Gita is such that it, the, the Kurukshetra war was not a war between devotees and non-devotees. Because Bhishma was a devotee on the opposite side. On the Pandava side, Drupada was a Shiva worshipper. Drupada was not exactly a Krishna devotee. He respected Krishna, but he was not a Krishna devotee. And it was not, the war was for establishing dharma, not bhakti. See, bhakti is voluntary. Bhakti cannot be forced. You cannot have a government which says everybody has to become a devotee now. Can do that. Can, they can say that, I will shoot you if you don't chant. <laughs> but you know, they, that chanting will not be out of love, isn't it? So the, the, the Karukshetra Yuddha, we call it a dharma yuddha, it is not a bhakti yuddha. It was not that everybody, after they were defeated, the cause of the war was not because the opposite side was not ready to worship Krishna. That was not the cause. See, there is the concept of hell. In the Abrahamic religions, hell is for non-believers. Hmm? Non-believers. If you don't believe in God, you will go to hell. That is the Abrahamic idea. In the Vedic tradition, hell is for wrongdoers. It is not for non-believers. So, of course, we can say non-believers will be wrongdoers. Well, not necessarily. Somebody can be a non-believer in the sense that they don't believe in God, but still they might live a, live a relatively sattvic life. They might be in the mode of goodness in the sense that they, they are charitable, they are polite, they are, they are environmentally conscious, maybe they are even vegetarian. It's possible. So, now of course, it is good to be devoted to the Lord, no doubt. But the point I'm making is, it is, if somebody goes to hell, it is not because Krishna says, you don't, you don't believe in me, so I'm going to send you to hell. It's not like that. Krishna has the law of karma operating in the world. And if you harm others, you'll be punished. So the, when somebody goes to hell, it is, it is karma sends people to hell. It is not that God sends people to hell. Now you can say, karma is working under God. That is true. But karma is neutral. Karma is impartial. And karma sends God to people to hell. And God goes with them. Because Krishna loves them so much. That he wants them to be delivered. He is the Paramatma present even when a soul goes to hell. So, that means karma is not, karma is a principle that applies for everyone. So, karma, it's, it's the law basically. So, there are actions which are harmful to others, and if you do those actions, you will go to hell. Now, of course, from one perspective, anything separated from Krishna is hell. And even if somebody is in heaven, a devotee feels that without separation, without Krishna, it's just like hell. That is a devotional perspective and that there's validity to it. No, no doubt. But the point I'm making is, it is not that Krishna is a vengeful God who sends people to hell just because they don't believe in him. So now, of course, when I said, it's an important principles, let's elaborate on this, 4.7. 4.8, 4.9 and 4.10 in the Bhagavad Gita. 4.7 and 8 are about establishing dharma. This Krishna says, even a war is to be fought. Dharma samsthapanarthaya sambhavami yuge yuge. And how does he do that? Vinashaya jadushkritam 
परित्राणाय साधना दोज हुआ रॉन्ग डूअर्स दे आर डिसम्पॉवर्ड दे आर साइड लाइन दे न्यूट्रलाइज एंड दोज हु आर डिवोटेड दोज हु आर पायस दे आर एम्पॉवर्ड ना आफ्टर दैट कृष्णा डस्ट टॉक अबाउट दस कृष्णा वॉन्ट डस्ट टू बिकम डिवोट इज डेफिनेटली द नेक्स्ट इज अबाउट इंस्पायरिंग भक्ति दैट जन्म कर्म च मे दिव्यम दैट दोज हु वाइल कृष्णा इज एस्टैब्लिशिंग धर्म Krishna performs such attractive pastimes that if people understand those pastimes, they will become attracted. And when they become attracted, then they will develop love for him. So these are two distinct missions. Puta mat bhava magata. The next verse is in four point ten that vitra agbhaya krodha man maya mam paashita bhavo gyana tapasa puta mat bhava magata. So in one sense, Krishna's in krishna's mission is multi level same way as matter of degrees dharma in the sense of dharma when krishna uses it over it's not so much in the sense of religion as social order like we say law and order in today's world krishna law and order is not optional you cannot say that that whether you rob or kill or violate people you know it's just my preference no yeah, there has to be law and order that is mandatory now beyond that whether somebody wants to practice bhakti or not that is voluntary it's good if they practice bhakti but everything good cannot be made legal you know, there is free will which krishna has given krishna doesn't descend to this world to take people's free will away so we could say krishna's mission in one sense is also a matter of degrees at one level at a foundational level krishna's mission is to establish dharma we could put this way it's like a funnel so at one level krishna's mission is to establish dharma and that is for whole society and then krishna's mission is also to inspire prema in the heart puta mat bhava magata ha but that is for individuals individuals who are willing so that's why krishna also says that kashchid yatati siddhaye yatatam api siddhana kashchid mam vetti tatvata few who would seek to know me and among those who know me few attain me so sudurlabha so, so the point is that krishna cares for everyone even those who are not ready to become his devotees krishna cares for them also krishna wants order to be established in society so that at least at a material level people are living harmoniously and then of course krishna wants them to become devotees that is the ultimate purpose of the material world no doubt about it so if you consider the world to be like a hospital now the purpose of the hospital is to heal people so that people can get, go and discharge and go home that is the final purpose but at the same time in the hospital while the hospital is there order has to be maintained in the hospital isn't it if somebody is a miscreant within the hospital that person has to be regulated that person has to be disciplined so krishna works that way so krishna's love is matter, a matter of degree not of category so in the bhakti <laughs> tradition while there is material categorization like there are mlechas and yavanas and so many other groups are talked about but the point is often made that bhakti cuts across all these categories even a mlecha or a yavana or a shopacha or whatever category might be used everyone can become a devotee and in that sense krishna's love includes everyone nobody is so far away from krishna that krishna can't reach them and no action of theirs can either do can do the same thing so that brings me to the next point so in principle we said krishna's love is unconditional krishna loves everyone at the same time it's a matter of degree based on how they are reciprocate